Jealousy is hard to talk about without feeling small. Love means having the same conversations over and over. Love means listening differently every time. I've spent the last six years unlearning all the ways my parents communicate. I still have the same conversations with my mother every day. She asks me when I am coming home and if I have a job. Once a year, my mother tells me she's depressed. Today, I tried watching everyone on the train like they had a broken heart. There is something so warlike and old about people on the train in the evenings. You can grow so old waiting for wars to end. My friend who is going through a breakup asks me to come over and watch him cry so he can get out of bed sometimes. He asks me to tell him where the pain is coming from. I point to a place. He says, that's right. It was just getting hard to tell. His heart breaks so loudly it ruptures mine. Some love stories do not end like anyone is right or wrong. People can just walk away from each other on their now broken feet. My friend will stay put until the breakup is real and bone shattering. I can't say stop because I wouldn't do different or haven't tried. Love is excessive to the point of survival. I keep telling my friends I love them in an effort to give the word love meaning. Every love story is eventually a ghost story. I'm reading a gay book that feels like the words out of my own mouth. Loving other writers means I'm always left both jealous and hungry. Half my anxiety comes from doing things that I love. If you stopped eating love stories back to back, you might remember that you aren't hungry. I'm glad my old lover flew away and didn't break my feet. I keep making haunted houses out of people. Sometimes there isn't enough time to invent new language from one person to the next. So we say the same words behind their backs to their faces. I love you sounds like I stole this feeling somewhere. In just a year, certain parts of this story have already become my ghost story. Many of them are ordinary places like kitchens and street corners. When I open my mouth in the village, bats fly out. There's something in the air this winter, stringing airplanes bombs and hearts and money to a single line of gunpowder. Every story I'm writing feels terrifying under its surface. I have this ungrounded fear that a poem and a bomb are two parts of the same rupture. Like we are just watching each other survive more. And this time, it's not even beautiful.